as we were discussing. So what I want to do is remind you that there are two motions that need to be considered. And I want to read for you the two motions. Some of you, like most of you, look like you were here on Monday. <laughs> so I don't know if you have them memorized. Um, but the first motion um, was, it was moved by Hansen and seconded by Mr. Lawrence for discussion. And my motion at that time was, I move that we place these five contracts on the January 28th, 2013 agenda for the purpose of curing and correcting any Brown Act violations. So that motion was the cure and correct piece. The substitute motion was moved by Mrs. Mayo and seconded by Mrs. Denler. And a substitute motion came in to um, after my original motion. And Mrs. Mayo's motion read, I move that the Board of Education write letters to citizens Lack and Minion, A, denying the cure, denying the cure and correct demands, of Lack's December 10th complaint and Minion's December 21st complaint, and further, B, thank citizens Lack and Minion for their steadfast commitment to the Brown Act and oversight of public agencies throughout Contra Costa County, and further, C, sign these letters in a public session on January 28th, 2013, and further, number two, that the Board of Education participate in trainings on the Brown Act and on administrator contracts, including but not limited to legal requirements, model language, and Brown Act procedures related thereto. Um, essentially, what it boils down to are the two motions that were on the floor and on the, uh, were one was a motion to cure and correct, and one was a motion to deny the cure and correct. And fundamentally, that's what the conversation comes down to at this point. The way it works in um, making a motion and then substituting a motion is the debate can focus on both motions. They're not mutually exclusive motions. One is to cure and correct, one is to deny that with some other conditions as well. And so voting on a substitute uh, motion is a two-step process. And I tried to make this as simple as possible because Robert's rules are about as exciting as paint drying. But um, to just, <laughs> I know them very well, but they're not that thrilling. But I do want us to go through um, properly. And so try to explain, not to um, patronize or degrade anyone here, but just because it's darn complicated. So I want to explain that both motions are on the floor. Debate, excuse me, Mrs. Mayo. Debate can focus on both motions. Voting on a substitute motion, again, I'm trying to write this as simply as possible. Voting on a substitute motion is a two-step process in Robert's Rules. First, you vote, and this is where it's so complicated that if I can explain it in a reasonable manner, I hope I can. First, we vote on the substitute motion which is to deny the cure and correct, but we vote in a substitute motion. It's a little different than an amended motion. On an amended motion, you just vote for the amended motion. In a substitute motion, because the maker of the motion is substituting for the original motion, you first have to decide as a board if it, the, that second motion will be a substitute motion. You have to consider it as a substitute motion because the maker of the motion decides you made this particular motion to cure and correct I decided to replace it with something and you know attempt to sort of strike out that motion so we first decide if the substitute motion will be a substitute for the original motion for us to asking for us to cure and correct so it actually because it's a two-step process what you do is a board, and this is where it gets complicated, and I hope I don't, just, you know, feel free to ask me questions. We vote on the substitute motion in terms of deciding if it's a substitute motion we want to consider. And so if we don't choose to consider the substitute motion to deny, cure, and correct, we'll just watch the outcome. First, first step is to decide if we want to substitute that motion and consider it. That's the first vote. The second vote is then if, if, it's, if the substitute motion is determined by the board not to be a substitute motion, then we um, do not progress with it. If it's determined that you want to consider it as a substitute motion, then we take we, the next step is to <coughs> vote on that substitute motion. Okay, have I confused anyone here? Madam President? Yes, Mrs. Mayor. It 
I have a different understanding of a substitute motion. If the substitute, I do not believe that a substitute motion requires two actions, first to accept the substitute motion and then to vote on it. It's my understanding that uh, it's a process whereby if my, if the board members vote to yes on um, my motion, that's less confusing to use mine or the Hanson, Mayo motion or Hanson motion. If the board members vote yes on the Mayo motion, then that is the adopted motion. Okay, it, it doesn't work that way in a substitute motion. It works that way in an amended motion. So, you know, the parliamentary ruling here is that that's how Robert's rule structures it. It's what's so strange about substitute motion is you have to do, you have to determine that it's a substitute motion. So the information that I'm looking at right now says a substitute motion is an amendment that, that changes an entire sentence or paragraph. It may be amended like any other amendment. It differs from an amendment only in that the motion, only in that the motion to substitute, if adopted, does away entirely with the original motion. And what you have to do, and if you go to the nice thick new version of Robert's Rules, what you have to do is Take a vote first to determine that that is going to substitute the other motion. Then, if that's the case, then you vote on that motion. I disagree with you. Um, well, that's the Roberts opinion. rules in the big fat version, and poor Ms. Cooksey's over here thumbing through. It takes you a little while to read it, <laughs> and so that's the finding of Roberts rules. I'm I'm can you quite cite the confident page about that. that. Can you cite the I page don't, can't cite that. the page, but she's got the book I, that we all refer to because it's the most recent version of Robert's Rules, and that's the one that we use as our authority. I do have the 11th edition. Um, if you give me a second, I'll find the information about the substitute motions. Because I do believe that Ms. Mayo is correct about the secondary motion. I was prepared to speak to that, but I want to look at substitute motions. Okay. So while we're waiting for Ms. Cooksey to look that up, uh, are we in agreement that my substitute motion can be amended? And could we proceed with that step? Your substitute motion can be amended. Okay. Yes. Then I would like to make an amendment to my substitute motion. <clears throat> I move to amend Linda Mayo's motion by inserting a new number one, which would read number one, um, parens, that no Brown Act violation occurred. and is time barred in regard to the making of the five council members contract contracts with an S on April 23rd, 2012 and by renumbering the remaining sections accordingly. That, that price list number one would become two and number two would Okay, do you have this in writing because it's too much to write down? I don't know if Ms. Mintz is able to get that. No, that's a trouble when this happens this way. <coughs> yes. You want to be able to repeat this. Sure, we have this because Miss Cooksey, anyway, is over here doing that. <clears throat> 